thanks for coming in for the state of Fedora Cube. It's a it's literally a new day for me. It's uh, it's about twelve o'clock in India right now. So I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about numbers, what Fedora Cube does, and more importantly, I'm gonna talk. Vividly about what's new in Fedora, more like what's coming in Fedora QA as for community. Right now, Fedora QA has always been this theme which has been the uh, you know the prime spot of a lot of contributors who have tried to be in Fedora and who have tried to be um, either being a user at Fedora who started contributing either by filing bugs or they started contributing by um, let's say um, writing some test case or running some test case for a package or something like that. A little bit about myself. I'm Shumantro. I um, go by Shumantro M on a lot of channels, mostly Fedora Kiwi. And today the talk is going to be specifically about what are the new things that we are bringing into Fedora Kiwi, a bit about recognition models and a little bit about how to get um, how we are going to plan things through F37 cycles. If somebody is new here, this slide is obviously going to give them some pointers around how you get, um, you know, how you get started and how you can um, basically go about doing some QA activity. Now, so moving on, who are we? We are basically bug squashers. We do a lot of other things as well. One of them includes a set of things includes hosting test days, both the app at infrastructure as well as basically hosting test days for multiple six teams, working groups in collaboration with almost everything. Um, we do a lot of release validation events, and release validations are these um, compose testing events that we do for Rawhide, Nightly, Branched, and Beta. And Definitely fine. These are also exactly where we find the blocker bugs, which then go around, you know, blocking release. So, other than that, we maintain this automation system called OpenQA. Adam Williamson does it with Lukash Jeska in our team, and we also help a lot of, or rather, onboard a lot of update testers who are basically set of people would go around testing for package updates to a stable operating system and uh, you know package updates for specifically uh, the upcoming um, you know release so f37 would have a both his starting point in at at that point we are going to basically have updates for packages which are then going to get tested and that's that those are the very specific things we do other than that we also are very involved when it comes to you know development of relval tools. So um, the release validation tools around Fedora are also maintained by us. Um, in our team, uh, there is Lily who who has created this thing called Moonlight. It's an automation system again, which tests for decon machines. We um, some of our team members they maintain packager dashboard emt and a lot more um so th these are a set of tools that are maintained by fedora qa team and we actively look out for contributors and that brings me to the last point of it we explicitly try to onboard new contributors both via um, the email lists as well as we go to onboarding calls and mostly you know onboard teams. So that's a bit description about us the qr code um if scanned would point you to the join page of Fedora, which then can be, um, you know, which, which can read through if you're new and then you can, you know, understand some of these terms better. Um, the TCMS, yes, we have been trying to, um, you know, there's an active effort to basically just uh, deprecate WikiTCMS and set up uh, a test instance. We have been, we have tried, uh, or we are currently trying QETCMS and that's something that we have been uh, you know, experimenting. But these are the few things that QA team does. Now, having said that, what is interesting is as, as a state of Fedora QA, I wanted to cover what we have achieved and what are our highlights. That brings me to the next part of the thing, which is 
since F35, more like F34, we started having these um, 12 ish odd test weeks every cycle. And they include primarily the fixed test weeks, which are kernels, the um, Fedora IoT, Fedora Core OS, um, uh, GNOME, I18N. These are our fixed candidates, and we pick up chain sets and we learn. And basically, we just go around running test weeks. We have started putting in something called Fedora raw height test days, which I'm going to talk about a little bit after in the slides. We kind of have, in the last few releases, we have hardened and expanded the release criteria. So um, dual monitors, release criteria, no default apps release criteria. Kamil has actually helped a lot to expand those criteria, and we have achieved a lot better, uh, you know, blocker status or rather very fine tuned blocker status every time we have, you know, gone about changing those. We have successfully added a IoT test metrics, and then we have gone ahead and we have um, added or rather run a bunch of core OS test days. And, um, you know, if things goes fine, core OS is going to be your addition this time. That's that's something that we are very proud of um, as highlights of the QA team because we have really helped a lot to you know really helped our community to basically test a lot of these things. However, CoreOS has a fantastic automation that they run on Koala. Um, uh, Dusty might be somewhere there if if somebody wants to contribute to that piece of software or rather that piece of te test case management system. Um, now. When I look at our highlights, one of the things that comes almost instantly to me is the amount of GNOME apps that has changed over release cycles. We have maintained, or rather worked closely with the GNOME uh, working group, workstation working group, make sure that these test cases are maintained actively. Some of these get big fraught and we kind of take uh, some effort. It's still in progress. We take some effort to maintain these test cases, keep them as much up to date as possible, and more like flesh out these test cases and make sure things work. Uh, one more sh shout out for us is we made uh, one of our team members, Jeff Marr, um, has actually QA'd a lot of framework laptops. He has made um, the integration and in rather Fedora to run on framework laptop very successfully. There's a talk that he is presenting. I don't know the timings. You can check the schedule. But if you have, if you happen to be interested in framework and Fedora, that's a talk you, you might want to see. That's that's kind of the highlight that we have for, um, you know, what we do as the in the last few releases. Now, mostly that you know the state of Fedora usually QA usually comes to is okay all of these is great but what's next and one of the things that strike up to us very um, indefinitely is something that we have been trying to do for last two releases which is we kind of wanted to basically have all the community members test a specific compose during the beta and the final in a more um, you know how do i put it holistic way the way by which the entire um, the, the folks across the globe would be able to participate in some sort of event, and that's that's what we are going to basically call as release validation event. And the QR code usually will take you to a ticket, which on Pagyar, Fedora uh, QR Pagyar, which would then define what we are trying to do with these events. And however, it's it's not actually implemented, but we are planning to implement it from this release cycle. So this release cycle will have a beta validation event and a final validation event. These events are mostly going to help our community grow and sustain. Uh, the other initiative that we are trying to go forward is something that you know I am more interested in leading is a test case sandbox. And the way I want to put this is a lot of the new QA members when they join Fedora QA, they usually are either asked to test updates or they are asked to test, uh, 
you know, release validations. And release validations for somebody who is new to Linux becomes typically very hard because it involves someone to basically understand all the test cases of the particular, um, you know, compose they are trying to test and then, you know, run through everything, right? And then that becomes a little bit of a challenge for newcomers. There's a way that I have, I have kind of put through. The mechanism is simple, which is we would go around writing as much as package test cases as possible. Uh, the QR code currently will point you to a HackMD, which has a bunch of test cases for package. If you click on those test cases, you will find a set of instructions, or a new contributor will find some instructions, which they, they, they then can run for those packages and basically give a karma to those packages if, those, if they are using the latest version. At, with time, we want to basically ensure that more test cases are added to this sandbox so that whenever a new community member is onboarded, they basically just go look at uh, all the test cases and basically keep you know, posting karmas and testing some basic functionality of whatever package that if they're interested in. Now, how to write test cases, that's one thing that I am more interested in right now as, as we are looking for a new, Q, uh, new TCMS and stuff like that. We still want to make sure that there, there, are, there are ways by which we let people know that uh, there are a bunch of test cases that needs to be written. Uh, there are certain things that people are more interested to know. And that's the third effort we want to lead from the QA team side of things which is we want to get a general onboarding call that we anyway do for um, today. We want to expand that to basically have three specific type of call. One, which is collaboration with Fedora join SIG, and that's going to be a classroom for things like Bugzilla and OpenQA and stuff like that, which are very niche topics, uh, should not be more than 30 minutes, and should basically cover up uh, you know, a very specific, curious audience. The second thing is we want to make sure that every contributor, as they go ahead consuming the test cases or the sandbox cases, uh, as I call it, they, they, would, they should be able to, at a point, write this test case themselves, right? And then send it off to the test list for a verification or rather uh, you know, make sure that they karma these packages or rather they add these test cases to the sandbox at which point any new contributor can find those packages and then start queuing. The way we want to do it is we want to make sure there's a specialized onboarding that happens. And in that case, I would run through multiple set of packages, uh, some system level, some core, um, some of these packages, which are tools, uh, like for example, Toolbox, um, Podman, you know, generic-ish test cases for anybody to write. And then we can either put that as part of test day, we can put that as a part of, uh, you know, a package, and that, that, should be, that should be something that we are looking at. So these are the three new initiatives or the three new moves that we are planning go around um, as a part of the 36, 36, 7 to 38 and 39 release cycle. That's mostly in the box, in the thing. So if you are somebody who is interested and if you are, uh, if you think this is something that you want to do, there, there are certain things that you can start doing today, which would take you one step closer to participating in the state of Fedora QA. And the first thing is we are trying to actively tell our contributors to go back to join SIG and help new contributors join Fedora QA. So uh, given that join SIG is a very nice platform for anybody to reach out and um, basically get guidance and help, it also is important that if you are already somebody in QA, um, you, you please go ahead and 
um, you know, help some joint set members or anybody whom you find in joint set who is interested uh, to basically join Fedora QA with your experience of Fedora QA, that would help them go a long way, you know, as we go ahead. That's, that's one thing we want to give back as much as we can. And the way that we start doing that is reaching out to Fedora Joint say, you know, the mailing list and the IRPs and see what can be done. Until now, we have been very successful at doing that. We have been able to take up new contributors from JoinSec, convert them into uh, long-term Fedora QA contributors. That has really worked way well with us. And the way that we have currently been focusing on doing that is using this thing called test. Now, test days are these one-day events that we usually do. Currently, we have about 12 to 14-ish um, you know, test days every six months recycle they are extremely beginner friendly and most important part of the test days is not just participating but also hosting testing so you don't have to be a fedora qa member to host a test day in the last release um, the wallpaper uh, team basically requested Fedora QA, file a Fedora QA ticket that they wanted to do a test day. And, you know, and that test day happened and few bugs were filed and they got fixed. It's a, it's a very nice mechanism that we have put in place. So if you are somebody who wants to uh, work closely with the crew, the state of affairs is just go ahead, file a ticket, and host your own test. That's one of the biggest advantages there is other than just participating in a test. Um, currently, if you look at the QA tracker, there are new test days that are being, uh, test tickets which are being filed by folks, uh, so GNOME folks, uh, mostly there are tickets of crypto policy changes and Justin Forbes files tickets for kernel tests. So that's the state of affairs when it comes to participating in test days, both hosting and taking part. The, Last part is, which is a bit tough for new people to get to, is basically using this thing called release validation testing and test case rate. Now, the way release validation testing usually uh, is heavy on new people is because we have usually a lot of the test cases and they are matched with a lot of criterion. So if you're really new, some of these test cases might look too heavy. Some of them have a criterion based on it. So if it fails, it becomes a blocker and you have to file a blocker bug, which has uh, some, uh, for which you need to have some level of bugzilla knowledge. And that's one thing we want to cater this time. We want to have the onboarding calls cater to these specific set of use cases so that we can go ahead and help. At this point, we do not have specific onboarding calls for writing test cases, or we don't have specific onboarding calls which uh, talks about just Bugzilla. So we would probably want to have classrooms where we talk about Bugzilla and ticket filing and how to file good bugs kind of sessions, which would then encourage contributors to basically take part in QA activities more. Um, moving on, a lot of people in the last few day, um, you know, releases have complained or rather showed explicit interest in making sure that they get some recognition, some form of recognition, either in terms of badges or in terms of swag. Um, the way that it has been usually working is we usually have a badges design and that gets that gets pushed and then that gets allotted manually. That's a lot of work, but currently badges is broken. So a lot of people might have not gotten badges for testing kernels or um, you know editing wikis and stuff like that. But from here on, we want to basically just go ahead and talk about a couple of things that we have in, um, have in plan to introduce from this cycle onwards or we will at least attempt to introduce from this cycle onwards, and that is proposing a special badge 
for authoring a test case, five test cases, 10 test cases, 15, 20, 25, 50, and so on. Same for test days. So participated in one test day, three test days, five test days, 12, 15, 16, so on. If you are somebody who is hosting a classroom where you are teaching, um, let's say, open QA, or you are teaching Bugzilla, or you are teaching um, a, a, a debugging concept like a dog tail for GNOME, I think there should be a badge for that. So that's, it, that's in works. Today, I was talking to Whipple, and uh, since we are talking badges, I was talking to Whipple, and Whipple has opened up a discussion ticket. The link is up there. If, if you are somebody who is interested in development of badges and you want to see all these badges come true, uh, make sure you go ahead and uh, visit the thread, put your inputs, and that should make uh, a lot of case for us to go ahead and implement some of these as fast as we can. Having said that, as a state of Fedora QA, we resort back to another way that we could potentially reward candidates, and that's by giving some swag. At this point, QA team has not tried to approach Mindshare for swags, but I think there is a room for us to go ahead and ask for some swags. Um, of course, with the help of design team and Mindshare, we, we could actually get um, some specific QA swags to be shipped to people um, who might have participated in more than like 10 test days or five test days in the last release cycle or coming release cycle. Uh, however, at this point, I would be open to more suggestions as to what you think or the community thinks should be a good routing mechanism or good recognition mechanism. Because as we go on and the community grows, QA is a lot based on trust. And as the trust grows, we have to ensure that we make sure we don't burn out our contributors, which also includes being very respectful for to the contributors of how they spend their time in QA. So we would look, love to explore recognition opportunities and we'd love to work with um, anybody who has any ideas about what to give out as potential recognition models. So having said that, we have, uh, you know, that's the that's in a nutshell about what Fedora QA's um, state of affairs looks like. So let's make Fedora better. And yeah, that's my one of my favorite quotes of all time. Now, all code is guilty un until proven innocent. I I hope you guys have somewhat idea of what we are going to do as a part of Fedora QA, and I hope you guys have you know, enjoyed the presentation. In the next um, six odd minutes, I would be taking questions if anybody has, and I'll be stopping the slide. So, okay, Ben has a question, which is, okay, I should probably start reading from you. How do you plan to cover Silver Blue as well as, uh, as, well as in the test week? So, yes, we had Silver Blue test weeks until 34. So I would want to see Night and Silver Blue test days. I've been working with Debershi uh, uh, recently very much. So I would love to see more test cases come out and I would love to see RPM OS free getting tested in more depth as we go on. Yes, RPM OS free is the same thing Core OS is built on and the same thing that um, IoT is built on. So we would love to see that being covered. Yes. I, 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 you know, talk to me or file a ticket. I would love to, you know, work with you to cover test days if you're willing. Do you see, uh, see room for unit testing in Fedora in future? Okay, so this test days or rather the testing that I'm talking about, these testings are mostly from the user point of view. They are regressional, they're functional, they're end-to-end. -end. Uh, we do not cater to unit testing if that answers the but yes, if you wanted to, you could basically still um, probably look at Bagheer, find some project, and then start writing some unit test cases to have knowledge room. But 
uh, we do not kind of this is user level thing. This is not unit testing. Um, ben, question. How can we help upstream projects do more testing so that bugs can be caught for the landing for it? Okay, so Ben, that's a nice question. Here's what we do. We try to, the whole point of having raw height test days going forward is basically to have these things tested during raw height. To currently go ahead and look at our tracker, I actually plan to host a test week on Word Manager and Podman and Toolbox, stuff like this as a part of Rawhide, where we would probably be taking the latest and greatest of whatever there is in the upstream side of things and make sure that they get tested before the land in, you know, before the actual land in Bra. Uh, but if you are specifically talking about more upstream projects, I think. Increasing QA mindshare in multiple projects is a very, very nice way to do that. I know Adam and Kamil um, file a lot of bugs for gnomes upstream. And uh, I know that they have been extremely successful with that before. Having a mindshare at upstream projects helps a lot. And that is something that we probably can work with to make sure that we you know, work closely with the SIGs or you know, working closely with the working groups or in fact, the entire project. So we can probably just um, you know, work very closely with you know, in this case. Um, I tried a lot with Rust. We had Rust test days before. We used to test a, a lot of Rust tool chain, Rust plugins. I ran a bunch of Java test days as well, where uh, uh, back in the day when Giri was maintainer for Java, and I, I don't know if he still maintains it, but we ran a lot of um, test days back in the day for making sure the bugs are caught well before the land. I, I think that answers it. Uh, 